Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the bald explorer, out on another church investigation. And I'm in West Sussex. I'm at the foot of the South Downs. I'm sort of as west as you can go in West Sussex. I'm here to have a look at Elsted Church. And with me, somebody who's been on our videos before, we have Andrew Shaxon. Hello, Andrew. Morning, Richard. Lovely to meet you again. Mm, yes. uh, another beautiful sunny day in West Sussex. Excellent. Yes. This is St. Paul's, I believe. Mm -hmm. Another of the, the three churches uh, in the area that are all linked together in, a, in their own way. Is that correct? That's right. They're in a combined parish and um, parish of Elstead, Trayford, Cum Diddling. And you have been to Diddling Church yes. already. So do check out the Diddling video because uh, that was very interesting. But we are at St. Paul's. Shall we go and have a look at it? I think we ought to. Now, there's, you're going to take us in an interesting way because there is a gate, but there is these steps here. This, this is a footpath and it's um, long been here, so we'll right. go via these steps. I shall follow you through. <coughs> and here we are. The footpath goes off to the northern side. Oh, right. Up towards um, the, the, well, I was going to say the sort of Midhurst area, but well, we're a bit west of Midhurst, aren't we? Yeah. Yes. So as we come up to the front of the church, this particular church, now this church, similar case with Diddling, that it was in a bit of a sorrowful state and has been repaired. But it's, it's early times is back at the Saxon times. It is. Um, part of the structure, which we'll see in a minute, um, is indeed Saxon. It's probably a thousand years old. But what we're looking at here is not much more than 50 years old because Gosh. it was rebuilt and rededicated in 1951. Wow, so that's, that's quite recent for church modern modernification. Yeah. Well, it was a case of needs be because it was derelict. Yes. Um, inside the church is a before and after model of what it was like and that will illustrate very well just what the yes. need, the, why there was a need for a rebuild and and i mean and, and it's drastic isn't it you know the difference between the before and after is quite drastic with walls missing the bell uh, in the corner oh yes uh, i mean it's quite a, a a big change well it is um it's it's difficult to know how much detail to go into but um the point was that there were three the three medieval churches in this village were um, effectively closed and a big new victorian church was built in their place yes which in its turn fell into disrepair and was demolished within a hundred years of being built so they had to rebuild this church or have nothing or have nothing yes and we're going to tell that story of the um the, the new church and its demise in a in a separate video it's very um it's very picturesque it's very quintessential english in elstrid itself the, it the is. village yes, yes um you've got that and it's a farming community presumably well it's well there are farms around you, of course, but yes. to say any um, English community is farming now is probably um, not not particularly accurate because more people are doing things than farming. But of yes. course, go back 50 or more years and all these cottages were lived in by farm workers. Yes. It was really in the 1960s that uh, farming stopped um, needing people living on the doorstep. Yes, absolutely. Mechanization took over more and more bigger equipment. And, and uh, yes that's right and so we hear the term div diversification all the time about how farmers have diversified to do uh, different things and use mm, the land mm, in different mm, ways mm, yeah. but from the graveyard here if we can take a step over here you do get some amazing views um, a 360 well almost 360 degree view around from the perimeter of the the little wall that uh, puts the church in you were telling me before course that a lot of churches are built on the highest place yes yes um, and because of that they would have been dedicated to st. Michael st. Michael yes. and that's that's typical is it of churches on high in high places well yes if you think of any place any church on a tour that that is usually or almost always dedicated to st. Michael be it Glastonbury tour Brent tour in on Dartmoor or Burrow Mump in um, in oh, right. Somerset. Right, I and mean, that's interesting. I, I, that, that's just a little fact I didn't know. Mm. Now let's go back to. Um, well, St. Michael was the archangel. He was the ah, high. He yes. was the high that's angel. The yes, yes, the high. Yes. So we're looking at um, the uh, east end 
of St. Paul's here, and it's a, there's a lot of flint work. You've got those um, two, are they again, the, the original lit, um, windows? It is likely, though it is it's almost certain, they were rebuilt in a reconstruction of a church when it was rebuilt in the 1870s. Right. It had been closed from the, the late 1840s to the early 1870s, nearly 25 years, and major work had to be carried out to it to get it into a state to be rebuilt, but it was reopened in 1872. So you've got these two periods then, uh, two major periods of reconstruction where work has gone on. You've got the, the stuff in the 1950s that you referred to earlier and then the, mm -hmm. the, the sort of mid to late Victorian period. Well, that wasn't, um, <coughs> yes, and then in even later Victorian period in the early 1890s, a tree which stood roughly where we are now fell on the roof of the nave made punched a huge hole in the roof of the nave but not so big that it couldn't have been repaired and um the rector left it left the the gash in the roof yes which with the obvious outcome that the building began to deteriorate the nave was closed and um and the building effectively became a ruin over the next 60 years before being rebuilt. So very much that can be put at the foot of the rector in charge. Well, we don't know what the politics was, no. the wider politics or indeed his own feelings, but certainly um, the, we had to sort out the outcome in the early 1950s. Gosh. Now, when you come round to this wall, which I guess is the north wall, we get a, a to see a dramatic change and this I guess is where we get to see some of the original Saxon work. The herringbone masonry yes um, with the blocked arches there was a very narrow aisle north aisle on this church it wasn't the south aisle and this this aisle was only was less than seven foot six wide so it does beg the question. That's incredible isn't it? <laughs> why, why, why was it built? Yes you've got two arches and you've got this this pier in the middle and so what you're saying Andrew is to about where we are now there was an aisle yes for the purpose presumably of widening the church for more people but not a well, lot more people well one wonders could it have helped brace the church incidentally ah. because as you will see and um, there are actually braces in all corners oh, I see. Um, there are buttresses and so maybe, maybe they were fearful it was going to fall well, if they didn't do something Again, we don't know. <laughs> no. It's buried in the midst of time. But then you go to the extent of these two great big arches. Yes, with with the windows which were taken from the outside the aisle. In the case of the the one over there, that window was in the outside the aisle. Oh, I see. And was put back and was here. Put back. That one, as you can see, is a modern one. Right. Yes. Oh, how fascinating! But it's lovely to see the Saxon work exposed. Mm, you mm. know, as a, as a visitor now coming round. We come round now to the, the west end and there is uh, an interesting feature high up um, which is a, a hexagonal window. Yes it's interesting but probably shouldn't be there. No. The, the purists probably take an extremely dim view of it but it's it has it has it has the function of ensuring that there's a lot of light in the church. Yes, I can but, imagine. But um, the church was actually rebuilt in 1951 when money was very short and it was done on a very limited budget and as a result of which they didn't use a stone stru um, hexagonal structure they used a reinforced concrete one which rotted the reinforcement <laughs> blue and it had to be replaced. It yes. was replaced with another reinforced concrete structure which in turn has replaced but what you see there now is actually proper is proper Portland stone. Hopefully it won't need replacing. No, good old Portland stone. But with a leper's squint. Oh yes, now that's fascinating, at isn't the bottom, it? Which um, obviously has a piece of glass in it now and the font is in front of it, but um it was it did enable the a leper or possibly somebody who was late for church and didn't yeah. want to be seen to look through, to look and, through to and to note what was happening. Yes, and of course, as you say, without the glass, they could have then at least hear as well. Well, yes. So let's go in and, and have a look inside um, because it's, it's fascinating how light the church is. Anybody who's visited a lot of rural churches on the one hand will know that often you go in and they're quite dark and, and they're quite cold, but this is beautifully light. And, and very simple in its presentation. 
Well, the decision was made, obviously, to ensure that, again, with the budget being at a minimum, you'll see that the, that the south wall is actually rough brickwork oh, yes. internally, which has been well covered in lime wash, in, in whitewash, so that that gives the impression of being okay with the, with the Saxon herring bone masonry, all that remains of it, at the very base. At the very base, yes. Oh, as, so yes. as the model illustrates. Yes, let's just have a quick look at the model. We hinted at that earlier. You can see uh, the two churches, the before and after, all in the space of a year. It says from 1951 to 1952, and a dramatic reconstruction work has gone on. There's an interesting story of how some of the money was gathered mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. with the, the, the local children. Well, the, the rector was a absolutely amazing fundraiser. If you got within 10 feet of him, he was, he was at your wallet. <laughs> he, he, nobody, people used to go literally walk the other side of the street to avoid him. But it, 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 it had the desired effect. He got money from all over the place. And in one year, it was possibly 1950, there's, I think it's called the St. Nicholas Fund, was, um, was a, an arrangement by which the Sussex children, school children, would save farthings. Right. And in that year, they saved farthings for this church rebuilding fund. And if my memory serves me correctly, they saved 136 pounds worth of farthings. 980 farthings to the pound, it gives you an idea of just how many farthings were accumulated, yes. which was a serious amount of money at that time. Yes, of course. Bearing in mind that this whole church was rebuilt for two and a half thousand pounds. Gosh. You know, a builder doesn't get out of bed for two and a half thousand <laughs> pounds today. But um, that money, also Eleanor Roosevelt, the widow of Franklin D. Roosevelt, was made aware of it and she sent some money. Good heavens. And Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, when she was still Queen Elizabeth, George the, the sixth wife, she sent some silver teaspoons which were auctioned. So a lot of people felt the rector's hand metaphorically <laughs> on their shoulder <laughs> in order to well, get the money. A, a, and a good job really uh, that he was like that because he's mm -hmm. um, reconstructed the, what could easily have disappeared. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it had reached a critical stage. And indeed, even this building, the, the, the chancel which remained and had been blocked off by a doorway across here, across the chancel arch, so that services were, took place inside the chancel. Um, even the chancel had cracks in it. It was structurally failing. Gosh. We'll, we'll finish off our video because we only have 10 minutes. Um, there's a much, much bigger story, but we'll finish off in here. You can see the, the difference between the light um, in the chancel and, the, and in the nave. It is, looking back, um, a very splendid church. Is it open to the public? Yes, it is. Um, none of the churches in this parish are locked. Fantastic. Well, for the moment, Andrew, thank you very much for taking us around uh, Elsted. It's been absolutely fantastic and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Good. Thanks for watching everybody and leave a comment, uh, make a suggestion and don't forget to subscribe. But until the next video, thanks for watching and goodbye.